Welcome to the presentation of generalizing discriminative retrieval models using generative tasks. My name is Bing Shen Liu. I'm a PhD student at RMIT University. This is a joint work with Hamad Zamani from University of Massachusetts, Xiaolu Lu from Microsoft, and Shane Culpepper from RMIT. The probability ranking principle provides a theoretic foundation to estimate the probability of a document being relevant to a query. The probability can be estimated using either a discriminative model or a generative model. A discriminative model estimates the probability directly. For example, neural ranking models produce a score indicating the relevance. A generative model, on the other hand, estimates relevance indirectly. For example, the query likelihood method estimates the probability of a query being generated from a document and then uses base rules to estimate the relevance. The two approaches are two sides of the same coin. So we hypothesize that a joint modeling approach leads to more generalized and more effective retrieval models. Concretely, in this work, we study is there a way to incorporate generation tasks into discriminative models so we can take advantage of the merits of both? First, let's have a look at how a typical discriminative neural ranking model works. I'll use BERT as an example, but the idea applies to any transformer encoder-based models. A common approach of using BERT for ranking is to feed the concatenation of a document and a query into BERT and fine-tune the first special CLS uh, token to produce a relevance score. And then we can rank documents based on their scores. And in the essence, it's very th similar to a binary classification problem. And our target is to incorporate generation tasks into BERT and see if that helps improve its ranking ability. But here we are faced with a challenge in the self-attention mechanism of BERT. The challenge is the self-attention is bidirectional, which means a token in the sequence is able to look into past and the future tokens at the same time. But this breaks generation because for generation, it's not possible for a model to know what future tokens are. So for generation tasks, unidirectional attention is required. A token can only look into past tokens, and the model is responsible of predicting future tokens based on past context. The final type of attention that's required in generation is cross-attention, also known as encoder-decoder attention. It's used in conditional generation tasks such as uh, translation, summarization, and query generation. So in order to use BERT for generation, we need something different than self-attention. Uh, we use mixed attention method. In this figure, we combine three types of attention into one. In our case, the blue boxes represent document tokens, uh, the green boxes represent query tokens, and the different colors of lines represent different types of attention. For example, uh, in a document query sequence, document tokens can attend to each other uh, through bidirectional attention, but query tokens can only attend to document tokens through cross attention and past query tokens through unidirectional attention. And now let's look at an example of how we use the mixed attention to solve the challenge we are faced with. This is what happens if we use BERT directly for generation. Suppose we are generating a query from the input, the United States became the largest tag something, and now the model is predicting the next word after US tag. What happens is the model has already seen the correct answer 
through the bidirectional tension from tag, which is shown as the thick line on the slide. So the model will just copy increased as output instead of figuring it out by itself. Eventually, the model won't be able to learn anything from generation. Now let's uh, see what happens if we use the mixed attention. With mixed attention, a token cannot see future tokens. So here there is no connection between tag and increased. If the model wants to get the prediction right, it has to understand the context and then figure it out by itself. In this case, the model needs to understand US means the United States and became the largest implies increased. And then it can make an educated guess. So with mixed attention, the model will be able to learn something from generation. And this is the main change we made to adapt, uh, to adapt BERT to generation tasks. Now we can come back to the idea of incorporating generation into BERT. The new method is called GDMTL. In the model, we replace the bidirectional self-attention with the mixed attention. Uh, in addition to that, we add multiple generation heads on top of BERT. Uh, specifically, when we feed the document query pair into BERT, uh, we do two things. First, we still use uh, the first COS token for ranking, and we still use uh, the bidirectional self-attention for that. And second, we switch to mixed attention and use the query as a teacher forcing target for sequence to sequence training. So in this way, BERT can be trained with uh, ranking and generation at the same time. That's how we apply the idea to BERT. We can apply the same idea of combining ranking and generation to encoder decoders like BART. This architecture is, uh, is commonly used for generation, but rarely used for ranking. It has everything we need for generation. So here the question is, how do we add ranking capability to this architecture? In our method, we add a ranking head to the model. So we can also combine ranking and generation. Here it's important that uh, to fine tune the ranking head, we need to use the last token in the sequence instead of the first, uh, first token, uh, which is used in BERT. Uh, this is because only the last token can attend to the entire sequence due to the cross attention and unidirectional attention inside decoders. Now we have two concrete examples of combining ranking and generation. Uh, now let's talk about how we train the models. The idea of training the models is very simple. Uh, we have a main task, which is ranking, so we have a ranking loss. When we add a generation task, we just add the corresponding generation loss into the equation. And at the same time, we can easily add more generation tasks like question answering. So ranking and generation can be uh, are optimized jointly in this way, and we hope the knowledge of generation is useful for ranking. And to determine the values of lambdas, we use a technique called uncertainty weighting. This technique estimates the uncertainty of a task, which represents our confidence in the task. In other words, um, if we have low confidence in the task, the contribution of the task to the joint loss will be reduced. And this is a dynamic process. As training goes on, if the model gets better and better at a specific task, the contribution of that task will increase correspondingly. This table shows how we prepare training examples. And the first one is a typical BERT uh, ranking model. We train it using document, cr document query pairs. GDMTL is our method with ranking and one generation task. Uh, in addition to ranking, we also train the model uh, to predict queries given documents. And GDMTL plus is our method 
uh, with ranking and two generation tasks, predicting uh, query given documents and predicting answers given query document pairs. This is our main results on MS Marco uh, passage retrieval task. Here let's focus on BERT GDMTO and GDMTO Plus. We can see that adding generation tasks significantly improve the uh, ranking effectiveness. And this is true for all the metrics here. And adding more generation tasks just brings more improvements. Uh, as we can see, GDMTL Plus is better than GDMTL. And using BART also shows a similar trend. Combining ranking and generation always results in more effective models than only using ranking. So this validates our hypothesis that the joint modeling approach is more effective. But how, exact, how exactly does generation help? In this table, we did a breakdown analysis. We divide queries into different types uh, using publicly available data. The most challenging type is description queries, uh, like the example here. We can imagine the answer must be a long description. And other types are relatively simpler. Uh, for example, the numeric query is very straightforward and can often be answered with just a number. The table shows description queries benefit most from generation tasks. And this is in line with our, uh, our expectation because generation tasks actually strengthens a model's text understanding ability, uh, which can be translated into, um, into higher effectiveness. Then we test if our model generalizes well. We transfer the models from MS Marco to CAST 2019 without any further fine tuning. We can still see some improvements here compared to the baseline uh, BERT. It's worth noting that the two test uh, sets have very different properties. CAST 2019 has deep and graded judgments, while MS Marco has shallow and binary judgments. And this may be why we see less significance here. Uh, finally, let's discuss a little bit about the impact of architecture choice. In our experiments, we find generally encoders are better at ranking than encoder decoders. And this can be explained by the different amount of query document interactions within each architecture. Um, on the left, we can see more lines between different colors. And uh, the, the different colors represent um, different query document interactions. Our analysis shows this is the key element that makes uh, encoder-based ranking models so powerful. But encoder decoders are still very interesting. Uh, in this work, we are more interested in testing ranking instead of generation. And we ignore the ranking the generation has during inference time. But if the main objective is generation, uh, how ranking impacts generation quality is another interesting research direction. To summarize, in this work, we proposed a framework to jointly model ranking and generation. Our experiments show that the joint modeling approach uh, leads to more generalized and more effective retrieval models. And in our analysis, we find generation tasks improves a uh, ranking model's uh, ability of understanding more complex query document relations, which translates to better effectiveness. Uh, this work was supported by the Australian Research Council's uh, discovery projects and by the Center for Intelligent Information Retrieval. Uh, thanks for watching.